What's up internet? I'm the nice one and today we're finishing off the environment modeling project we started last week. If you didn't see that video, click the link below and get caught up. But if you did, sit back, relax, and let me make the mistakes for you. So if you remember where we left off, the landscape we had built was kind of barren. Besides the face in the mountain, it really didn't have much interest to it. So I decided to add that stone platform and that forest to, you know, spice things up a bit. And that's what you see me doing here. Instead of making the trees by extruding out from a basic shape like you've seen me do before, I'm using a technique of extruding out from a single vertex point to create a line drawing of the trunk. Once I'm happy with the shape, I use a skin modifier to create the body of the tree based on the original line drawing. I think this is a better approach because it's way easier to orient an asymmetrical shape like a tree when you have very few vertices to worry about. For the actual leaves, I used icospheres more for the style, because I felt that icospheres fit the low poly look that I was going for in this environment. And you know, a texture that might look great by itself doesn't necessarily mean it's going to look good in your scene. It may just end up being a total fail. <laughs> Texturing was a pretty standard process, you know, creating the UV maps by unwrapping the mesh and then texture painting and blender to create the material. You know, making sure to cover all the faces so that you don't have those random black spots in your model that you see me screw up before. We painted the whole house and without getting a drop of paint on anything but the flapping blossom, what's that? Moving on to the platform, I started with a basic circle plane and I extruded it along the X axis to give it some depth. I added a ledge because I wanted this platform to look more like a historical site, you know, as if it had a little bit of mythology to it. And then extruding down some deep indents along the base so that it gave that cobblestone look that we all love. Again, texturing was a pretty standard process for this, unwrap and then live paint on the UV image. However, one thing to note, and what will make your models even better is by baking in some shading into the UV map and not just relying on the environment lighting. So you see me doing that here, adding in some shadows in the indent areas and the stone junctions, and also adding some highlight along the stone edges of the platform to mimic light reflecting off the stone. Now, let's just dance in a happy little sky. And remember, this is your world. You get to make and break the rules here. But you know, once you have everything modeled and textured, it's just landscaping after that. And then, boom, you're good to go. Nani? So anyway, internet, I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions about some of the things you saw here, just drop a comment down below or, you know, let me know if you'd like to see a step-by-step -step tutorial. Stay tuned for my next clip on either another character or environment modeling. But until then, I hope you liked the video. I'll talk to you later. Have a nice night.